Music transcends boundaries. Music knows no language. And for someone who needs to speak or communicate when they have nothing else in common, music plays the savior. My viewers would know that on Icon, we usually have personalities who have inspired us, people who have gone beyond what they can and proved to the world that this life is not just about the self, but about giving. Today, it isn't any different. I have with me the latest, the newest recipient of the coveted title, the highest civilian award in Australia, OAM, or the Order of Australia Medal. Recipient, Srimati Shobha Shekhar on the icon with me. Namaste Shobha Ji. Namaste. It's a pleasure to have you on M4TV's icon and you are none less than an icon as you sit here in front of me. You have always, so always inspired me um, from the works that you have done and it is indeed an honor to have you here today to uh, have a chat. Thank you, Shama. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Well, I'm grateful for this, uh, for, the, for this opportunity. Thank you for inviting me over for this interview. And primarily, congratulations on winning this title. And what would be, what would be the message that you have to share with the world regarding this um, award coming your way, this recognition? Honestly, I'm, I'm really, really happy to have this recognition because um, as artists, we always look for feedback. And this is like recognition from the highest authority. It is hard work, but at the end of the day, it is so satisfying that you can make that little difference to the benefit of society and to the world at large. And so I accept this as not only for what I've done, but I'm thinking, what else can I do for the community? How beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Shobhaji, you migrated into Australia uh, 25 years or much, much before 25 years. Um, um, the experience when you moved in then was probably very different from what we would have experienced in the recent times. Yes. Uh, was it difficult starting something like this or, you know, even initiating yourself into, you know, a big feat of introducing Indian culture and music to the Australian community? That's a great question, Shama. Um, you know, coming from a musical background like I did, my grandmother and my mother, they were all biomakers into music. And right from a very young age was into music. It, it was part of me. Um, and wherever I have, I've traveled around the world, I must say, I was in Mumbai as a, as a young child and learning in, in university. Then in Chennai, uh, where I learned under the great masters, uh, D.K. Jaraman Sir and Patama. Then wherever I have gone, there was music was a big part of me. And it was more, I would say, when I, I was in Singapore, where I, we think it's the best of East and West. You can live like you are in India yeah. as well as the West. Yeah. When I came to um, Australia, I mean it in a good way, but it was a big cultural, cultural shock, shock for me. Mm -hmm. It was a really big shock for me. And um, the appreciation for classical arts, I must say, was not much. Even the awareness was not there. They didn't understand what was classical music. And it was, um, I must say, I was taken aback by the lack of appreciation. And I said, what about music? What am I going to do about music? And then I got the grant from Australian government. I said, how can I teach here? But my thoughts were all about how can I bring it here? And um, and I went and spoke to all the stalwarts in India, my gurus and all the stalwarts of music. And I say, said, the children there, like when I had my initial classes, they didn't understand what I meant by squatting on the floor. And as you understand, Indian, Indian classical music, the only one I think we squat on the floor and perform. And uh, going a little bit on a tangent, and people even at the universities have asked me, why are they sitting on the floor? I think that is yogic posture. And I think music is very much related to yoga, the way we breathe, the way we 
hold our breath and everything. It's very yogic. And I think we sit on the floor also for that reason. Uh, so I've, I, at that time, when I went to Nash, I said, they, they don't know what music is, what classical art form. How do I teach them? And I got, I got uh, everyone told me, this is how you can teach. And I've cha changed the methodology of teaching Carnatic music here in Australia. It raised eyebrows at that time, but now everybody follows that without saying, I, I guess. Yeah, so I've changed it and um, and that's how I teach now and all my students and for the and I must say initially parents also used to say stop music when they were in ninth grade or something saying oh they have to study but I think you can't study 24 hours and your brain becomes you know it's like a sponge it will it's saturated it can't take in anymore do music listen to music it sort of relieves you and then you're you are in a capable you can absorb more yeah because it relieves you because everything is like that a mind also gets saturated 24 hours can you study no so music is something like that and i would advocate music for anybody any time of the year you can't don't have to sing 24 hours but you know you take time to respite do some music, do some listening, it eases the stress levels, everything, and then go back into music, into whatever you're doing. You will do that better. Yeah, so 25 years back, people didn't understand what it was, and it was a struggle for me. Uh, and uh, I used to, I remember in my classes, every 15 minutes I used to ask them, okay, get up, have a stretch and come back and sit down. Now, five-year-old, they are there uh, singing even for, you know, one hour, two hour classes without even thinking they've been in that position for a long time. And this week I gave them a break because, you know, we have eased conditions, restrictions right. and long week. And I said, come on, go out and enjoy. They said, no, we want to have classes. So that is the change now. That is so <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> and they're young children, I mind you. They are six, seven years old children. They love music now. Everybody loves it, um, especially my students, because uh, I guess they understand. You know, it is not as stress, as uh, strenuous an exercise as normally. They, everyone thinks classical music is wow. It is not something we can achieve or not. But yeah, you know what amuses me, Shobhaji, like. When you just spoke now, the number of times you mentioned music, uh, I just can't even count. You know? <laughs> but it shows that you know your life is all about music. <laughs> Yet, your school's name is Kalakruti, mm -hmm. uh, which means art evolves. And in that, there is no particular reference to music, but mm -hmm. it says Kala, which is art. Mm -hmm. And that shows how open and how um, accepting you are towards art as a big house than just music uh, in one of as one of the fine arts mm. could you explain you know how you came up with this name and wh what your you know insights were when you did this yeah i um Again, I think music is a part of art form, but uh, like you mentioned, yes, my heart is whenever I go for any program and look for music and even if I visit any place, I went to any part of the world, I'm thinking wherever there's music, it draws my attention towards that. That is me, but I think it, uh, art as a whole thing, whether you take up art, painting, like you have dancing, any art form, I think we must have that in us. It is, uh, you have your own profession, you have everything, but there must be something else in your life. And that is why I say Kala. And Kriti means I, yes, we are following tradition, classical music by itself is a traditional art form, but it is not static. It is always evolving. evolving. It's always evolving. And now I have ensembles for, I teach, um, music at universities ensembles and uh, I call it mantra and the participants are all they're playing on the cello they are playing on the piano on the drums and all the western instruments but it's Indian music so it uh, it it is not the way and I don't know if you know, but classical music has been solo it has usually it is solo because a lot of improvisation mm -hmm. and ensemble itself is of Western tradition that we bring it into Indian and I don't know if you know Kalakriti programs for the past 25 years always started with a music ensemble How always cool. and it is the whole school they come together juniors seniors veena percussion and it not only teaches you music I think the ensembles the team spirit 
right. amongst them. Right. Little give and take, like you can be a better singer, not so good a singer and everything. The team spirit that it builds among the ensemble participants is unimaginable. Yeah. Uh, what amuses me again about what you just said um, about you know bringing in Western musical instruments mm -hmm. to present in Indian song, uh, uh, it adds such a different flavor. Like if mm. you look at the fusion music scenario, which mm. is very very popular among the youth these days, yeah. they they usually use um, Indian instruments mm. and um, and a mix of Western instruments mm. to create and recreate songs that are already there. Mm. But when you just said that, you know, you use a complete different, you know, a Western in instrumental ensemble mm. to uh, do the Indian songs, mm. it sounds very exciting and. Uh, uh, talking about Carnatic music and your journey through Carnatic music, you come from a family, a, a beautiful lineage of artists. Mm -hmm. your, your, like you mentioned, your grandmother and mother were Vainikas. You yourself was an amazing Veena Vainika. And uh, you are also an amazing vocalist who has this huge school. Uh, carrying on one's legacy is not just about uh, passing it on to your offsprings. Mm. Sometimes when I when I look at your example, I see so many of your senior students become teachers mm. and carry on Kalakruti's uh, legacy. Uh, what inspires you to do that, you know? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what inspires me, but that is in me. Um, in fact, the children, you know, they start classical music generally when they're about four or five years old. And so many of my students are in their 20s and they are all doctors and professional engineers and chartered accountants. They are still with me. And for them, their parents, they say that I'm more than a teacher. I think I'm their friend. They think I'm their mother. Yeah, so I'm, I'm more, they are with me. So I have such an... Um, I hope I have a very positive impact on them and they imbibe your qualities in a way. Uh, uh, just to uh, quote an example, a young child, someone came to her house to ask her to sing and then she brought in some pillows, she brought some books and everything, spread it around her then started singing. And they were surprised, why are you doing all this? No, my teacher does this. <laughs> oh, how sweet. <laughs> That's how I'm in the class. So they try to sort mm. of replicate um, yeah. the way you sing yes that's definite even the way you behave the way you talk the way you think because that is music it's, i think it's it being is being a role model yeah you are a role model it's not only and i'm very strong believer that art it's just not art it is all these frills and everything that come along with it discipline the right. way you sit, the discipline, the focus. When you're sit, when you're singing, you cannot think of anything else. You know, you, it's just that. And what am I going to sing next? Is the shruti okay? The talam okay? So the focus of mind is so important. That is why when you're even you're singing something, you're doing second speed. This you have to sing twice. That you have to sing three times, four times. You're a dancer. You know how it is. Hmm. Any art form, for example. But when you're singing music, you have to f be so focused. Um, that the world comes to a standstill in a sense and you're so focused in what you're doing you're so disciplined the way you sit the way you uh, give it to the audience at the same time you're sensitive to the audience whether they like what you're doing whether they are engaging with you whether you're engaging them so it is a very complex kind of a situation you are in and uh, these children have over the period of years and they have done very well in their studies as well it is not like an impediment or uh, what can i say uh, loss of few hours for not you know when they have the exams i think um, they have been with me and uh, i think it should be a part of everyone yeah <laughs> Well, um, when you said that your students uh, learn from you, like you said, you are a role model for them. Uh, yes, you lead by example and Kalakrati has shown it many a times, you know, proven uh, many a times that music is not just uh, an entertainment for you. You, uh, tr you do humanitarian services mm. through your music. Mm. Could you um, elaborate on it to our, for our audience? Yes. Um I also strongly, very strongly believe that when, uh, especially as an artist, as an art form that we have, we have had a saint composers, they say they used to go and then have sung when, you know, 
when there was that's why I had last program Varshia. In fact, Muthuswami Dikshitar, one of our very eminent composers, he went to a village. It was uh, there was drought, no rain, that's like right. how we had the bushfire, for example, and there was no rain. And then he prayed to his uh, Ishta Devata, the God, and said, um, "I'm going to offer this. Please let there be a downpour of nectar." He doesn't call it rain; he calls it a downpour of nectar. So music has got magical powers, and um, composers, and they are saint composers more than being just musicians. Mm -hmm. They, ha it is miracle the way they have lived their lives has been like there are miracles in their life, whether we believe it or not. But it must have happened just 200 years back. So what mm -hmm. has been documented must be true. And I believe uh, we have when we sing, like. Um, just to quote an example, there was a, a blind boy who came from, used to come, he came from a concert, you know, they come and talk to you after the concert when I go to India for my regular December season concerts. Mm -hmm. And he came to me, he said his name is Karthik, he studies at the university, he's blind. And he came to me and he said, um, Madam Shobha, every time you come here, I come and listen to your music because for me, it brings so much peace of mind and tears to my eyes I was I also had tears in my eyes because that was the best feedback I've ever received for my concert and I believe as a musician you can turn lives to an extent you can uh, even people are happy you know it alleviates and I think it what I like to say it alleviates as well as elevates a person's mind um, and that's what I believe in every year Kalakriti concert I have made it a mission to donate, you know, it is a gesture to any any of the charities possible. Or sometimes, ten years back when we had the bushfire, Victorian bushfire, two thousand nine, we uh, the Red Cross appeal we did for that for the mental health. Uh, every year we choose different uh, categories and we donate. It is not only for that inculcating those value, values into in the kids. We say Kalakriti this year program will be for, you know, for the we had for the Monash Children's Hospital one year. This year we had for the Bushfire Victorian Appeal. Last year we had for the mental, and one uh, mental association. One year we had for the Royal Children's Hospital. So every year we have different um, charities, but I believe when I tell the ch all the students of Kalakriti, this year we are going to contribute. So, charity becomes a part, you know, one of your, what can I say, a facet of your life. You have to do something. Doesn't matter, you earn $10, you give 50 cents, $1, doesn't matter. But you have to give. That, that should be inculcated in all our children. Whatever you have, doesn't, it is not the amount that is important, it is the gesture, it is the thought that matters yeah shobhaji coming from um, a traditional lineage of art you know you practice carnatic music mm. how do you manage to teach carnatic music to students in the university of melbourne yes um that's it's very multicultural it, yeah so. it is and um, you have to customize the music. I don't teach there as I teach uh, normally in my school. I have to change it to suit the Western. They're all jazz musicians mm -hmm. and extremely good in what they are. But that's a general question I ask all my students. Have you heard Indian music? Have you learned Indian music? Any exposure? 95% say, they say no. no. If at all they say we have heard Ravi Shankar uh, right. because of his Beatle, maybe his... Right. Uh, but they say no. But after I start teaching them, they say, my God, how come we missed all this so divine? And in the context, I would like to uh, read uh, one, uh, the letter that I got from the Dean of, Mon of uh, University of Melbourne mm -hmm. after he listened to my acceptance speech. Um, now, after recently, he wrote to me your... yesterday. So he says, of course, I'm so happy to receive this fantastic news. And he says, I've just deeply enjoyed watching your wonderful Veena performance, your gorgeous singing and your eloquent speech. Your music brought tears of joy to my eyes and your words inspired me. Imagine the Dean That's of the University dean saying that. Um, inspired me with your wisdom 
about cultural diversity and the importance of teachers and music. Um, this is the uh, sort of feedback I get all the time from now over the past 10 years I must have taught about 1000 students uh, wow. who have graduated from university. Wow. Each one of them say somehow they find music is as divine, the Indian music is divine right. and initially of course they say okay you know those shaky parts that we had, Gamakas <laughs> is the most difficult part of them. But I think that is the spice of music we have and they, uh, I call it the spice of, because Indian music is very unique, we have got the spice. I would love to have asked you, you know, how you teach them <laughs> notations and you tell them that the gamakas are, you know. The gamakas uh, are the you, hardest part because they are taught to hit a note straight absolutely. and we are always curvaceous. We never hit a note straight. It's always coming from here. We glide from there. We grow from here. So that is a difficult part of them. But that is what they enjoy the most. And they have said it's divine. They love the way the voice is thrown and everything. So it is uh, so satisfying that, you know, I'm we are not we we don't live in a cocoon these days it's all global art form so to make an impact in the western world to be in the mainstream teaching at mainstream university i feel so privileged i feel so happy again that i'm taking it somewhere you know the next step into the world yeah. right shobaji in fact recollecting from what the dean said uh, about your eloquent speech um, mm -hmm. you're not only a musician you are also um, the author to many mm -hmm. uh, articles um, mm -hmm. and uh, reviews in music could you tell how uh, you know journalism kicked in i guess it's an interest my father used to write a lot and i think it arrived from college days i I have a love for writing. I used to, I was the editor for the college magazine and those days I used to write about different topics and then later on when music became an important part in my life, it became artistic journalism and I, even today I'm, uh, I'm the correspondent for Shruti magazine which is the only arts and um, music, dance magazine oh, from India. While in Singapore I was, I wrote a weekly column for Straits Times which is a very very prestigious uh, newspaper in Singapore and since you asked that question I'll tell you something when I in, you know in, when we are when I was in Singapore great artists used to come there to give you a few exa uh, examples Datta Mangeshkar, Padma Subramaniam and uh, Amjad Ali Khan, Maharajapuram Santanam uh -huh. um, all the great artists used to come even Kamala Hassan all of them um, so I've interviewed all of them. I used to write previews as well as reviews. Wow. And um, when Lata Mangeshkar arrives, I, sp and I, I believe uh, the world tells that, you know, she is quite reticent. But when I interviewed her, it was such a long interview and she was so, she loved to speak uh, about her life and everything. The common thread with all the celebrities, and you learn so much when you speak to great people. Absolutely. And when you talk to them about their lives, the common thread is we look at the brighter side after they are famous and everything, but they have all gone through that struggle in their lives. And when they first performed or when they first went into the world, it was not accepted. They said, oh, you're not good. Your voice is not good. You're not a good performer. You don't look good, whatever. They have all come up, uh, they have had criticism. They have their own struggles. They, yeah, yeah. they have all been criticized. They, it's a long struggle. But what brought them at the top, at the pinnacle of their life is their grit and their sincerity to the art form, sincerity to whatever they are. And the, uh, the commitment, the discipline and, you know, I have to do this. You must have a goal in life right. and nothing comes easy. And as, as I started with that, yeah, you hard work, pers perseverance, the grit, commitment, sincerity, all this was what made them what they are today. And I think that is a message which I have for all the youngsters. Nothing comes easy in life. You should not give up, you know, next, I, I can't sing, I'm going, or I can't study, I'm going away. Yes, you, it is a struggle, but try baby steps you don't have to go there in the top of the mountain today take baby steps but be sincere with what you're doing never shy away from hard work always always think what can I do how can I do better and on the humanitarian side can I help the life one little life can I do something beneficial for society for the next person next to me 
at your level you don't have to imitate anybody just be yourself but think can i be good to somebody can i do something beneficial for society that little thought will take you far you take you far in your life to achieve whatever your dream and dream big i dreamt big and um, today this award I'm, I'm dreaming even bigger what can i do for the world um, but i think we have all to have that in us the perseverance never shy from hard work have that little bit of humanitarian thought yes i have to do something good for the world i think that's a message i'll give to the next generations any any uh, wherever you are whichever level you are all of us have don't have to be top performers we don't have to be bill gates for example but if you donate millions of dollars i can donate 10 dollars yes <laughs> <laughs> the little what you can yes um in fact thank you so much Babaji. not only just for inspiring me mm -hmm. but for inspiring many young artists like me who have you know uh, seen and learned from you um coming here uh, probably two decades before even we arrived uh, you've shown us what it is and you know how it is you've paved the way for us to see how multicultural australia can become and how you can actually you, you know, evolve within your art to make a much yeah. more beautiful mm -hmm. society or a cultural community within the space that we call our homes now. Thank you so much once again for uh, being our guest on M4TV's The Icon. Uh, we totally loved your presence and your dynamism and your great goals and dreams. May uh, you saw greater heights, may Kalakriti see a uh, much bigger leg legacy uh, following it. Thank you so much once again for being on the icon with us today. Thank you, Shama. I've seen you as a great performer. I've seen your performances. You are the next generation. <laughs> and uh, I think we are looking forward. Uh, I've seen your students as well. You are carrying on the torchbearer, I should say, for the next generation. Right. And um, my, uh, I'm so grateful to MT M4TV for this program. And um, I would like to conclude <laughs> my interview with a message to all of you, the audience around the world, that um, we are going through very distressing times, but I'm sure we will tide through all this. But let us have that little bit of... Uh, a, fl a flame a torch in us to do good for the world think good and we will solve all our problems but have a little beauty of art in your life music is very important um, and that is my message to all the youngsters and all the viewers thank you